Welcome to the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing. Want to find a trout stream that you can fish all day and seldom see anyone? No boats, no swimmers, no road noise or trash along the banks. You like catching lots of trout in a day? You really don't care how big they are? You like walking in the woods and exploring? If you answer yes to any of these questions, then small trout streams are the place for you. Oh yeah, nice fish! That fish has already refused that fly, and you're gonna have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Crazy Rainbow Ranch, Adipose Boat Works, Global Rescue, Prout Unlimited, Oscar Blues Brewery. You know, most people would drive by this little stream and never think about fishing it. They think, oh, it's too small to hold fish, too small to hold a decent fish. Nobody else around, no boats, no inner tubes, and solitude. What could be better? We're gonna talk about small streams in this show, but first, a bit of clarification. By small streams, I mean those streams that are too small to float a boat and anywhere from the width of a two-lane country road to ones you can step across. These are the streams that most people don't bother to fish, and the ones you'll seldom find any written or internet information on. So you either need some local intelligence by visiting a fly shop and buying something, or you should have an interest in exploring. It's what I like best about small streams. You never know what you'll encounter until you get out there and fish them. Most of the fish you catch will be small, and you need to learn to appreciate them in perspective. However, there's always hope that you'll find that one big trout hidden in a deeper pool in a small stream. If you appreciate the beauty of little gems in beautiful places, you'll soon learn to love small streams the way I do. You know, a lot of people would laugh at a fish like this, but this is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. He fought pretty well. He's never seen the inside of a hatchery tank. He's got beautiful, beautiful, clean, white-edged fins. Just a gorgeous little fish. How do you find these secret places? Probably the most fail-safe method is to explore tributaries to rivers known to harbor trout, or to fish the very headwaters of famous rivers. Typically, the further you get from the main river, the better the fishing. So don't be disappointed if you don't catch trout right away. Keep going until you find better fishing or you're ready to give up. Another way to find small streams is to use a terrain map for what's called blue lining. You must be in a place where temperatures are cold enough for trout. In many northern states, that can be almost anywhere as long as groundwater temperatures are below 60 degrees. In the warmer southern states, you typically look for elevations above 1,200 feet, where streams stay cold enough for trout year-round. Look for streams that have at least one or two tributaries coming into them because some of these blue lines are such tiny streams they might hold just very tiny trout or none at all. Once you find a stream, you can zero in on exactly where you want to fish. I like to look for places where the stream has lots of bends because where there are bends, they're typically deeper pools. Depth is almost always a limiting factor in small streams as much of the water may be too shallow for trout. You need at least two feet of depth somewhere for a stream to hold trout of any size. If a stream is straight for a long stretch, look for narrow contour lines on the topo map 
because that usually indicates a steep drop in the stream valley with pocket water that may have enough depth. You may wish to look for streams that are close to a road if you don't want to do a lot of walking, but these spots are typically fished a bit, so the farther you get from a road, the better. Avoid places near campgrounds. These are usually heavily fished and campers often keep fish for dinner. Some of the best places to fish small streams are rocky, steep gradient streams with plunge pools. They have enough depth to hold trout in slower pockets and they're often quite open along the bank, so there's plenty of room for casting. Because of the tumbling water, trout in these mountain streams are often quite easy to approach and you don't need as much stealth as you would in slower water. Be careful of drag though, as the many conflicting currents mean that cast should be short and you should keep as much line as possible off the water to avoid drag. As you get down into valleys with lower gradient, you'll find smoother water and more gentle currents. Look for bends in the stream or deep undercut banks that provide enough shelter for trout. Here, stealth is a lot more important. Fish will notice you in the smoother water and they're always on the alert for predators. Keep your profile low so you stay below their window of visibility. Avoid false casting over places you suspect will hold fish. And if possible, don't even get into the water. The waves you make from wading can alert trout to your presence. Spring creeks are those low gradient streams that often come full blown from underground springs. They often have a rich abundance of food and trout that are more selective and spookier than trout in ordinary meadow streams. The one kind of small stream where you really have to change your game is in a spring creek. And you can tell I'm standing in a spring creek because you can see the crystal clear water and the aquatic vegetation behind me. So these fish are very well fed. There's a lot of food in spring creeks. They're very productive. Most of the bugs are gonna be small. So you really can't get away with just slapping a big old dry fly out there in a spring creek. You're gonna have to go to smaller flies, finer leaders, smaller nymphs, and just totally change your game when you're fishing a small spring creek. Finally, if you're fishing the Western United States where irrigation is common, don't overlook irrigation ditches. Often these watercourses pull trout from the main river and some of them also have small springs flowing into them. Trout in these places are often hard to catch, but during grasshopper season, when irrigation is at its peak, you may discover trout in unlikely and overlooked places. When we return, we'll find out what kind of tackle and cast you'll need to take advantage of the many delights of small streams. The good news is that you probably already have the tackle you need to fish most small streams. There's a tendency to want a short, tiny rod for small streams, but a longer rod is often desirable, something between eight and nine feet long. So a lot of people think you need a super short rod to fish small streams, but that's usually not the case. In a mountain stream like this, you want to hold lots of line off the water. You want basically just part of your leader and the fly on the water. And with a super short rod, you just can't hold that much line off the water. So a longer rod sometimes helps. There's nothing wrong with scaling down your tackle though. And some people just like the idea of using a smaller rod for these mostly smaller fish. If you really get down into the weeds in tiny brushy streams, a rod from six to seven and a half feet might give you a bit more room to cast. But think about it, you're only getting about a foot of extra room for casting with a shorter rod. If you're gonna do this kind of stuff, you need to modify your tackle a little bit. Um, modern, most modern fly rods are optimized to cast about 35 feet of line. The problem is in small streams, you're often casting just a few feet of line. So one of the ways you can do this is you can get a rod that has more of a full flex action that's optimized to cast shorter lengths of line, like this super fine. The other thing you can do is you can use a fiberglass rod. Fiberglass by nature or bamboo fly rods are slower action. They'll bend more at short casts 
and they'll be able to throw those short lines. Plus they roll cast better. And a third option, if you don't want to get another rod just for small streams, is to overline your normal fly rod by one or two line sizes. So if you have a four weight rod and you want to fish really small streams, then put a five or six weight line on it. That'll make the rod bend more, it'll roll cast easier, and it'll be much better in small streams. The rod size you choose, knowing that you might have to overline it, should reflect the flies you use. Typically on small streams, we use flies that are surprisingly large because the fish are hungry and often not selective. Plus, it's nice to fish a fly you can see. Dry flies in sizes 10 through 14 are pretty standard, with nymphs in the same sizes. So four and five weight lines are perfect. You can go lighter if you want to use a smaller rod, or as heavy as a six weight if that's all you have, but I would not go any heavier than a six. Lines and leaders for small streams couldn't be easier. You need a floating line and a seven and a half foot 4X leader for nearly every small stream you fish. Most of this fishing is dry dropper or dry fly fishing, and often your line doesn't even touch the water. Even if it does, the water's so shallow so a sinking line would only get you into trouble. Keep it simple. Leaders for this kind of fishing should be standard nylon tapered leaders, anywhere from seven and a half feet long to nine feet long. You can use longer leaders if you like, and sometimes you need them in the flat meadow streams. But for the most part, because both casts and drifts will be short, a shorter leader turns over better. And even with a short leader, you won't put your fly line over the fish. So for small mountain streams like this, there's no better tool than a tankara rod. It's very simple fly fishing. It has no reel. You tie the line to the end of the rod and it has no fly line. What you have is a piece of level line that's about one and a half times the length of the rod. And it's highly visible. It's highly visible monofilament. And then on the end, you just have four feet of 5X tippet. And that's all you need. One of the biggest advantages of a tank car rod is that you have no fly line, so you can keep that light line in the air. You keep all your line off the water, just a little bit of your tippet, and you get really great drag-free floats. The roll cast will become your best friend on small streams because it has no back cast. And slower rods or overlined rods roll cast better than stiffer ones. To learn how to perfect your roll cast, let's visit my friend Pete Kutzer for some instruction on fine tuning this cast. Hi, I'm Pete Kutzer with the Orvis Fly Fishing Schools. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the roll cast and how we can make it a little bit more efficient and a little easier. A lot of people like to fish small streams and some of us may be a little intimidated by these small streams because there isn't a lot of back cast room. Well, that's where the roll cast is going to come into play. When you have limited back cast room, this roll cast is a great tool to have in your arsenal. To make this roll cast, we're going to bring our hand up by our ear. A lot of people have a tendency to keep that hand low right here, and they want to imagine that that line is rolling over on top of the water. Just like our forward cast, we want to make a nice smooth acceleration to a stop around eye level. That's going to get that fly to unroll above the water and straighten out, getting out to those fish. We can make a roll cast in a lot of different situations. There's a high angle roll cast up here. You can make a sidearm roll cast. You can also roll cast over your opposite shoulder. And this is a very, very effective technique. When you're in these small streams, Try this roll cast. So my hand is up across from my ear. I'm gonna to toss the fly in the water. I make a nice flick, stopping at eye level, and that fly jumps right out nice and straight with a delicate presentation. You can do this roll cast, like I said, across your shoulder and get it out there. You can do this roll cast down low and pop it out there. When we make this roll cast, make sure when you get that hand up into that back cast position right here, that you stop. You wait and you freeze for a second. We have to make sure that there's some line in contact with the water before we flick it forward. It's not a continuous move. We're not rolling the line around. We're gonna come back, wait for a second, then we can flick it forward. That wait allows the line to stick to the water, then we can flick it forward and get that line to jump right out. Give this roll cast a try next time you're on a small stream. I'm sure you'll find a lot more places where you can catch a fish.
so you're almost ready to start exploring small streams. When we return, we'll talk about the flies you'll need, how to work a small stream, and how to approach these mostly little fish. What flies do I need? Should I work upstream or down? How do I fish really tiny brushy streams? These are questions I often get when people ask me about small stream fishing. So in this segment, we'll talk about those issues and more. Don't agonize over flies for small stream trout. Because these streams, except for spring creeks, seldom see heavy hatches, the fish don't get selective to a particular kind of insect. Anything that floats by that looks reasonably buggy will probably be taken in most of them. You can use bigger flies in small streams, even during the summer when most insect hatches on trout streams are tiny. These fish eat a lot of terrestrials like grasshoppers and beetles, ants and moths, but you don't even need to imitate these insects specifically because small stream trout see a great variety of bugs. The best dry flies are ones that float well because some of your casts will be roll cast and you don't want to false cast much in tight quarters. I like stimulators, parachute atoms, foam bodied flies, and elk hair caddis for small streams. But you may have other favorites. You should be able to see your fly because small stream trout strike quickly and you want to see the rise and also because you need to keep an eye on your fly to make sure it's drifting properly. You know, most of the time, all you need in a small mountain stream like this is a big bushy dry fly. But I've gone through some pretty good water, including this pool that I'm now sitting in, and I didn't pick up a fish. I know they're here. And I've gotten just a few half-hearted rises and one small fish to this dry fly. So I'm gonna add a nymph. I'm gonna add about, I don't know, maybe six to eight inches of 5X fluorocarbon to the end of my dry fly, put on a smaller nymph, and the dry fly will be my indicator, and they may also take the dry fly, but now I've got two choices for the fish. The nymph dropper should be just slightly longer than the average depth of the water, or even shorter, because you don't need to scratch bottom with your nymph on these small streams. Often, you'll catch half of your fish on the dry, and the other half on the nymph. Just as with dry flies, you don't need to agonize over your nymph selection. Just pick a popular nymph in size 10 through 14. Use standard nymphs for shallower places and beadhead nymphs in the deeper pools. In those slower meadow streams, trout might be a little pickier about their nymphs and you may need to go smaller and even change fly patterns a few times to find out what they like. People always ask me, should I be fishing upstream or downstream? Well, in a small stream, you don't have a lot of options. The trout are facing upstream, so if you approach them from upstream, there's a better chance they're gonna see you and spook. So you have to stay quite a ways from them and make long casts. I can't really swing a wet fly downstream because the stream is too narrow. I don't get any swing. So what I can do is I can throw a dry fly with a lot of slack, or I could hang a little streamer down there and twitch it back up to me. But you're really better off working upstream in these tiny streams. Don't spend much time in each little pocket on small streams. For the most part, trout will either take your fly in the first few casts or you'll spook them with your presence and they won't take anything. Sneak up to an attractive spot carefully, then make a dozen casts and move on to the next good one. You may also have to do a lot of walking between spots to find places that might hold trout. In some small streams, you'll find fish in almost every little pocket. In others, you'll only find them in the very best places. When I fish a new stream, I like to fish everything first. And then, only if I find trout in the deeper, more protected pockets will I move quickly between spots and then just look for the good stuff. If you're not catching fish in a small stream, just keep moving. It's usually not the fly. I've got a big, attractive dry fly on here. I'm hanging a nymph below it, not picking up any fish. The fish just haven't woken up. So hopefully by moving, you'll find a place where the fish are a little more agreeable. 
It's really challenging to fish very tight, brushy streams with a fly rod. But the upside is that you may be the only one who ever fishes that spot with a fly, or the only one that ever fishes it at all. In this kind of water, you'll probably never even fish anything but your leader. One way of fishing these streams is to dab, which is exactly what it sounds like. Sneak up to an opening and dip your dry fly onto the water. Or drop a nymph into a tiny pool and jig it up and down enticingly. Or put a small split shot ahead of a streamer and jig it into deeper pockets. Another way to fish brushy streams is with the bow and arrow cast. Pull out your leader and maybe part of your fly line until you have about the length of the rod outside the guides. Hold your leader off to one side, opposite your ear, bend the rod back, and let fly by pointing your rod tip at your target. It's not pretty and you won't get much distance, but sometimes it's the only game in town when you don't even have enough room to do a roll cast. Fish in larger rivers have the comfort of depth and sometimes you can get quite close to them because they feel secure over deeper water. Not so in small streams where predators like herons, mergansers, otters, and raccoons are just a swipe away. Trout are most frightened by quick movements, so if you can move slowly, you'll frighten fewer fish. Try to stay in the shade if you can, or use background, rocks, or foliage to keep you more hidden. I don't think clothing color is that critical because it's movement, not colors, that spook trout. So if you just choose colors that roughly match the background, you should be fine. Keep your profile low whenever possible and keep your casting to a minimum. And if you have to false cast, do it at a low angle so the fish don't see your fly line waving through the air. Keep all your movements in a low angle so there's less of a chance a trout will notice you. And if you see trout darting for cover before you even get a chance to cast, you know you're moving too quickly. Slow down, enjoy the water, and move more like a heron than a frightened deer. It's all right. When you get tired of other anglers and boats and swimmers and snotty trout in big rivers, there's nothing like a day on a small stream. It's mostly gonna be small fish, but it's the essence of fly fishing. And every once in a while, you get a good one. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoyed the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing. We hope something that you learned in the show today allows you to have more fun on the water. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Adipose Boat Works. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited. Oscar Blues Brewery. <laughs>